Talk about, let's run you through some of the dailies. And so let's uh, do it this way. Now look at Daily Trust, for instance. Bandits return to Kaduna Abuja Highway, Abduct 30, Block Road for 45 minutes. Wow, somebody was keeping tabs on that one, guys. In the next paper up now is Leadership Newspapers. Leadership has on their front page, uh, you can see there, Humanitarian Sleaze. EFCC quizzes, Sadia invites better edu. They also have a number of riders. Ministers suspended to allow transparent probe. That's according to agency. Edu spotted at Aso Villa. Interior minister distances self from humanitarian ministry contract. So that's the lead. That's the front page of leadership this morning. Story on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper is the same as that of the leadership newspaper, only a different tilt to it. 585 million naira graft suspended better edu denied access to Tinubu. Stories on page five. Humanitarian Affairs Minister to appear for EFCC today. Ex-Minister Shadia Umar Farouk sleeps in EFCC cell over 44 billion naira scam. We're leaving no stone unturned in fishing out corporates, EFCC vows. Uza demand Dume CSO's action aid. I'm not a signatory to a company linked to Beta Edu. That's according to the Interior Minister. Find out the details of that on page five. Well, take a look at the Guardian next. 585 million humanitarian scandal. EFCC quizzes and battled Edu others as anti graft opera heightens. And then you also get to see subscribers suffer service disruption over 70 billion naira interconnect debts. As you got it. New Telegraph also follows suit. Everyone focusing on that quizzing. 585 million naira scandal. Suspended better edu denied access to Tinubu. Told to hand over to PAMSEC. May face EFCC interrogators today. President demands detail of financial architecture, framework of social investment programs. Uza Dimma backs decision to spend, suspend minister. Uh, that's what New Telegraph has on its front page. This Nigeria newspaper has a different tilt to it, both in its caption and in the choice of picture. Take a look at it. This Nigeria newspaper, you better step aside. And... Uh, very interesting and the picture is like what I do uh, but, but look at the riders Tinubu suspends humanitarian affairs and poverty alleviation minister over 585 million naira scandal Edu denied access to president in Aso Villa EFCC quizzes and battled minister today Ndume Sheikh Hussani others hail suspension the details you'll find on pages 4 5 and 7 of this Nigeria today How about the Nigerian Observer? Yes, they equally observe the 585 billion hour scandal, but beneath that story, you get to see it's illegal for states to control Nigeria's inland waterways, impose levies. Supreme Court. Wow. Just wow. But that's a law now. Indeed. Um, I, I'm wondering who is to have more. I think it's, is that business day? No, that's the Observer. Okay, I'm just... I think I was just looking for what Business Day has on its front page uh, this morning. Okay, yes, you can see it right there. Business Day. Foreign investors exit from Nigerian stocks near three-year high. So they're also keeping tabs um, on the Nigerian stock market. Interestingly, the bulls are still having their way at the stock market. So... Even if investors are leaving and somehow we're still, the bulls are still having, uh, having the day, I think it says a lot about the resilience mm -hmm. of the Nigerian stock market and quite a lot to continue to look at right there, especially as we enter the new year. Okay, so, um, you know, guys, some of the things that uh, did catch my attention, for instance, on the front page of the Guardian here today, uh, it was talked in right there on the side where... Uh, the members of the House of Reps were blaming the Ministry of Agriculture for at least delay in sharing Tinubu's palliatives, as it were, because remember, several citizens have been asking questions concerning that one. 
So incidentally, we had the Minister of State for Agriculture yesterday, so mm -hmm. that they, this didn't come up. We didn't see this. It only just came through now that there's that bureaucratic bottle. But importantly, we also did say that they needed to speak up. We called for that, that they should speak up about what is happening. If the constituents had been at least promised certain things through their members, they need to speak up. But now that they have said this one, blaming agri-ministry for probably the bureaucratic bottleneck, but agri-ministry in turn also need to clear the air concerning mm -hmm. this. Is this the case? Are you the one responsible for Nigerians not getting palliatives? But the question then is, if they are citing delay or bottlenecks from the ministry, what about those senators, those members, House of Rest members that you saw distributing them? Where did it come from? Yeah. Were some faster than others? It's a big story. Because I know that some of the members were saying, oh, it's because those states have elections coming up. So, <laughs> is it that there's been focused <laughs> so they're putting on the politics. states? Exactly. Are they playing politics with it? Because the idea is that, you know, this is representative of yeah. Nigeria. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I mm. mean, we have members from the APC, PDP, Labour Party, and everybody is supposed to be able to get something to their constituency. So if at the end of the day, I, I want to imagine that members are not going to be distributing it through their party offices. But that's another thing. Are they going to be doing that? If they're doing that, they should forget. They should not forget that it's not only party members vote when elections come. So yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of people who are not within political parties. You'll be seeking their votes. And I want to imagine that those are the people that you will want to give this rice. Uh, the, the palliative, whatever form they're coming in. But I think that there needs to be a little more clarity on what exactly has happened. The, minute, the, the, the members of the House of Reps need to have a more formal, uh, you know, let's like say engagement on that, by formal, maybe a press conference of sorts, uh, and then, or maybe an engagement with the Ministry of Agriculture to find out what precisely is holding back, yeah. as, especially those members who are yet to receive their own bags of rice. Or the beg your pardon. I don't know why I keep saying bags of rice. Palliatives. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, I'm just assuming that it's just bags of rice. It might be something else. Okay, I think that, that will be that for... Uh, let's take a look at what the, the Daily Trust led with. That, that story is very, very important. And I, I hope that all of the security officials involved in bringing safety to that road. It was just a few days ago, a colleague of ours, in fact, it was just yesterday, as a matter of fact, that this interview aired with the director, I'm looking for the right word, no, it's not director general, commandant in chief, what do they use? Oh, the NSCDC. NSCDC. Yes, yeah, commandant general. Commandant general? Yeah. Commandant general of the NSCDC, and he was talking about how uh, security has improved. And one of the places, interestingly, he cited uh, was this Abuja Kaduna Highway, and he said it was oh, difficult. Dear. So, yes, that was the example. Are they listening that he, to him? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, and that's the reason why you hear governors never wanting to brag about security. Because one minute you say something, and next minute, it seems these people are, re are working to ruin whatever success you say you've recorded. Oh, wow. But look, this is what we're seeing on the front page of Daily Trust this morning. Very disturbing. Bandits return to Kaduna Abuja Highway. Abduct 30. <laughs> I hope that that's, a, that's not something that we're going to be going into the year with, and this will just be a one off. Uh, that will be the hope. Let's leave it there for Daily Trust. Well, well the question you want to ask, uh, Maokwe, is did they ever really leave that place in the first place? Remember all of the rhetorics making the rounds at the time that some um, officials in the security agencies, I don't want to mention anyone so it doesn't sound like an indictment, saying that there was some kind of arrangement to ensure that at least there is peace in that, re in that um, environment. And don't also forget that we had these stories say that some people in those communities preferred those uh, you know outlaws let me let me use that word to protect them because if they don't they are they are doomed anyways that's the way it it, it, it came across and of course we had interviews several around that one and it, it parts in the same light that, that I am very particularly interested in this story talked on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper where which, which says that uh, you know uh, the members of CAN in, in Plateau State um, CAN leads protests against continued killings in Plateau it's one of the stories at the bottom left corner of the Vanguard newspaper this morning, and I find it very, very interesting. You know, the one, another journalist, uh, well, call it citizen journalist or whatever, went to that environment and, you know, made videos and said, what's all these things about? 
Look, just Google, you know, insecurity in Plateau State, and you'll find out that Plateau State was a once peaceful state. We had this interview here, you know, you guys, you will remember, with the governor in the wake of that um, attack on Plateau State, you know, late last year. And the man was literally saying, look, look, these things are not new to us. We know that there are some communities, 64 communities in Plateau State that have been occupied. And what he says he's going to see the president. Well, the can leaders, you know, uh, went ahead and they, they carried their own protest. And they were asking that the governor should go talk to the president on their behalf according to them the protesters a situation where the military and other security agencies had failed to protect the people against terror attacks and at the same time would not allow the victims to defend themselves against the invasion of their communities is the height of injustice against the people and of course they are calling on the president to take drastic action to deal with the situation this is not in any way manner shape or form to disparage the intense work being done by all of our security agencies, the military, the police, the, the, the whoever you are doing amazing work. Don't also forget that it was at some point one uh, CDS, I think, that we spoke with here, talked about the role of politics in security or a lack of it in our country. Is this one of those issues? People cannot be left to their helplessness. The primary function of government is the security and welfare of the people. It's not just the law, it is the constitution. So now we are talking about Kaduna Abuja Highway again. We are we're still talking about what's happening in Plateau State and God forbid, where next? So without security, we may not be able to secure the investment that we are driving into the country. I'm sure that is something that the president is very well aware of. Let's just hope that everyone else around him and in government with him, particularly at the state level, are aware of this fact as well. It's so back to you guys. The other story that caught my attention is uh, on the front page of New Telegraph. Senators seem to be waiting now. I think uh, they are on recess at the moment, and yeah. so they're speaking from wherever they are. Uh, for instance, you see Carlo Tutinubu address insecurity, economy, electricity. And then uh, Senator Ndume on the far right on the same breath says, dismantle emerging political cartel. Ndume begs Tinubu urges president to raise security agents' salaries allowances. And you know, of course we know how important it is to get it right with security. But there are several other questions which we'll keep highlighting here that we keep playing this ostrich. Yes, uh, the former government also did talk about I think there was some decision and directive to increase the salaries of policemen. Now, some policemen did say they hadn't seen it. I think at some point, eventually, some said they saw something, but we we'll need to double check to see what kind of impact that had on policing. Because policing themselves, <coughs> if you ask some of the military men behind the scenes, they'll tell you, look, some of the functions that the military carry out internally are policing jobs. Mm -hmm. So why is it that we haven't decided to do anything deliberate to make sure that we empower the police such that they can carry out those activities. Look, yes, you may talk about the ones you see on the streets, how they need to do a lot better, but what do you expect if you don't give them that kind of training? Mm -hmm. What do you expect if politicians keep letting their cronies go into all those places and hold those kind of positions and jobs? What do you expect if they see that you don't even respect them and accord them their pride of place in the society? What do you expect? Because it's garbage in garbage out. If you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, as they say. So we need to ensure that we address that question. Do we want police, the policing structure or the security architecture to be reorganized? What is wrong in multi-layer, multi-level policing? Because it's one thing to mount it, and when we get into government, we don't put our money where our mouth is. So with this government, we're waiting to see, in fact, I think journalists, wherever they see them, should ask them. Uh, from, from the president downward, what is your stance on multi-level policing? Very important question to ask, Chamberlain. As the last time we counted, 
the military was involved in about 27 states in internal operations in about 20, if not more than, up to 30 now. There are about 36 states in Nigeria. We have 36 states exactly and the federal capital territory. So if you have the military involved in internal operations in about 30 states, then it goes to tell you just what state of security yeah. uh, we're in. Uh, a very, very important question to ask of ourselves as to what precisely we want to have of our police and also of our security architecture. But let's take a look at leadership again and uh, the lead and the story I'd like to highlight. I mean, while there's plenty of focus on what was happening at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, uh, this was quietly slipped in yesterday. Tinubu dismisses consumer protection and BPE bosses. Mm. Uh, so that was quietly, quietly <coughs> excuse me, slipped in there. So Babatunde Irukera. Uh, well, I thought he was doing the job. Exactly. So uh, that's, that's the impression a lot of people have, that the FCCPC, as they're called, I'm trying mm -hmm. to remember their new abbreviation now, uh, seem to have been doing a pretty good job. So when they said, oh, they were dismissed for, uh, what did they say they were dismissed for now? They are dismissed in conformity with plans to restructure and reposition critical agencies of federal government. Oof. You now have to ask, uh, has there been a proper assessment of these agencies? Uh, properly, because the, the, this FCCPC is now a self-accounting agency. Yeah. In other words, they no longer draw monies uh, from the treasury. They no longer draw. They are which is a able, standard. Which is a standard, and they're supposed to be able to make money of their own and and keep themselves going, which is something that they have now started. So it came as a rather as a surprise, as a rude shock of some sort. Uh, listening to that story on the news yesterday, uh, that the president had dismissed the boss of the consumer protection. I, I'm not very familiar with who the boss of the BPE is and what their work has been since we have uh, since handed over a number of government agencies to private hands. I, I know that there's a lot of that. The BPE was very prominent in the Obasanjo era. Uh, but the consumer protection, they've been pretty responsive, uh, taking questions even on social media platforms <coughs> and, and coming out with you know very massive publicity to tell citizens about their rights. So, it, it really came as a big shock yesterday. So but this was wh whoever takes the seat now. Yes, has a standard. You have a job cut out for you. Exactly. Whoever that is, an expectation. People will from expect the people. you to do much more than they have seen Mr. Rukara do. Exactly. Period. Yeah, and I think that he certainly deserves the thanks of Nigerians. Oh yes. He really did. You know, he he put his work. He put a lot of work into that agency. And that's what we want. Any public well. official who Indeed. does good to Nigerians, Nigerians will thank them. Indeed. That's what they want. Indeed. I didn't think I got a... Well, sometimes they say this work is a thankless job. <laughs> so if he didn't Are get you a any, public official? If he didn't get a thank you, I'm sure that he understands that his work <laughs> can be a thankless job. But hey, I think on behalf of Nigerians, oh, we can say thank you for your service, Mr. Erukera. <laughs> Let's leave it there for the leadership newspapers. You know, I find it very interesting um, um, what, what you, what you just said now, I'm aware that, look, if you are doing a good job, Nigerians will know, and those who feel it in particular. Allow me, guys, to, to go to the front page of the Nigerian Observer. Right above the nameplate is that very interesting story of surveillance cameras to become compulsory for businesses designated premises in Edo. Um, hopefully, that's, of course, the idea mm. is to step up security. Look at the rider. Obaseki pushes to sustain gains Amen. recorded in tackling insecurity. That's, the, that's it right there above the nameplate of uh, the Nigerian Observer. Is there a way we can replicate this thing all over the place? Uh, someone was talking the other day and he was saying, look, in, in certain parts of the world, in certain countries of the world, it is impossible to get away with certain things because there are cameras all over the place. And that uh, will help to sustain the measure of insecurity, of security that we may have put up here and there. But uh, there, are, there is usually some kind of skill to getting that done. Don't play, place this surveillance cameras in places where the people you are looking to catch will first of all go and pull them down before they commit the offense. But can we replicate this thing all over Nigeria? Can every state, I think Lagos State has done fairly well in that regard. Can we, can we replicate the same thing for every area of the country. We know that there are some areas, Chimile, I'm wondering, I'm not to, how will we replicate that kind of situation, for instance, in the area so-called ungoverned spaces in certain parts of the north? 
because this is where insecurity happened in those areas. Is that possible? It's just a brain, just something that uh, trickled into my brain now. But this is definitely a good one. So, yes, Mark, I'm with you on this one. When you're doing right, people should say, well done. But what do you think about that idea, guys? Well, alternatively, you can be like the lizard. If nobody thanks you when you fall. <laughs> you nod your head. Do it yourself. <laughs> I will praise myself. <laughs> but you know, uh, we had the FCT official here last time, and he also did say that in FCT, it's actually compulsory mm. to have CCTVs in your, your private premise and public premises, your offices, so that they are going to begin enforcement and see how they can ensure that that happens. You're like, Whoa, is, we, is that government that. derelicting their own duty? I mean, is this supposed to sit in? Is this supposed to replace what government is supposed to do? What government has been unable to do? You know, mm. now forcing businesses and private rents. So I, I know that security is all of our business. Mm -hmm. And we're all supposed to, you know, be security conscious. And this is, one of, this is one of the ways that we show that we're security conscious. And if you even look at what has been happening around in many places uh, where you see... Uh, maybe somebody's caught on camera. Usually these footages are from private, um, you know, facilities. But it doesn't remove the fact that government is supposed to also have its own in strategic places. Yeah. So and wh while they're enforcing that for private people, I also hope that government has plans. And not what we heard with the CCTV scandal in Abuja. I hope mm -hmm. that they have plans to also put their own in yeah. place. And as a matter of fact, I, I, it would be important to also uh, state that I don't think they should approach the way they do things normally where because he also did say when we asked him that yes they will require some of those footage if they are if there's any security issue that needs to be done so if you have those closed circuit cameras in your premise um, or premises I who knows it remains to be seen what the law says you can give or what the law says you can't give if it's in your private bedroom, are you allowed to, can they request that? If it's outside your gate, maybe. Because of course, there are things you want to keep personal. So I don't know how Edo State wants to approach this. In fact, FCT, we need to ask them more questions. But if it's in public places, government knows that they need to do their jobs. And this government, by the way, this government and this IGP, they need to speak up about where are we now? Or even the FCT minister. Are the CCTVs functional? We spent a lot of money on those ones. How much are they going to cost? Why are they not functioning? Who took those contracts? Look, there's no time, it's not time bound. Mm. If you embezzled the money five years ago, the law can say catch up with you. Indeed. If it was 10 years ago, the law can say catch up with you. So nobody should tell me, I won't look at what happened. No, no, no. The law is the law. Or else people will be encouraged to go do it. Pray that a Joseph or a Pharaoh that knows you comes in after eight years, the one that comes who doesn't know you, you're gone with the wind. That's not how it works. All right. That's um, not how it should work. I think there's one more. Yeah. And I think the lead story on the front page of this one, we missed it just briefly. This Nigeria says, you better step aside. That's your lead story on the front page, uh, playing on the oh, name boy. there. Uh, you better step aside. That's the lead story on the front page of this Nigeria. Uh, you see right there, Tinubu suspends humanitarian affairs and poverty alleviation minister over 585 million naira scandal. A do denied access to president in Aso Villa. AFCC quizzes and battled minister today. Ndume, Shehusani, others. Ill suspension. So it's right there on the front page. But I think one story for us to highlight will be this Anambra boat mishap. Uh, four still missing as Niwa confirms eight deaths, 38 survivors. Uh, first, Chimeling, I think you highlighted that Supreme Court judgment, which gives you know, absolute control to the federal government in terms of regulation of the waterways. It'll be interesting to see how the states digest that particular ruling. I think it came in about two days ago. It's, it's still not clear. You know, I, we're seeing it being highlighted, uh, you know, just yesterday. But the Supreme Court has ruled in favor of the federal government. But you know, these deaths we continue to see on our waterways as a result of a lack of safety that we've put, that we have not yet put in place with regards to the use of our waterways. Something really, uh, something urgent needs to be done about it. Last year, we lost a lot of lives. If we put together the number of lives we lost as a result of waterways mishaps in Taraba, in Niger, 
it, it, the number comes up to something. And now, this new year, uh, we hear that five people have lost their lives, have lost their lives uh, as a result of, uh, you know, just using the waterways. I think that, you know, we need to pay a little more attention to safety on our mm. waterways. And I know that we've not heard the last of this. I mean, of yeah. course, the Supreme Court is the last, is the last court, um, you know, but I think it'll be interesting to hear, to know precisely what the states, uh, how they're going to internalize, as Chamberlain would say, internalize mm -hmm. the judgment as given by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. hope it's not backed off a water resources bill. Mm. All right, so there you go. That ends it with a look at some of the dailies here this morning. We're back in a moment. Stay on with us.